questions on the comments or quest comments on the presentations later kindly indicate them in the Q&A chat box and we will respond them after each presentation and there will also be a session on Q&A after the last presentation. So to start with the webinar, my topic is on mangrove conservation, lessons from the field and grant making. My presentation covers information about the Forest Foundation, the science of mangrove conservation, and lessons from the field on mangrove conservation. So the Forest Foundation Philippines, formerly Philippine Tropical Forest Conservation Foundation, was established in 2002 under a bilateral agreement between the US and the Philippine governments. The foundation is a nonprofit organization that provides grant to protect the forests that includes our coastal forests, the mangroves. The foundation supported a number of mangrove conservation projects in various parts of the country. The map here indicates the location of the mangrove projects, such as Pangasinan, Sambales, Pampanga, Quezon, Batangas, Camarines Sur, Palawan, Northern Samar, Eastern Samar, and Capiz, Aklan, Cebu, Bohol, Siargao, Northern Mindanao, Lano del Norte, Sambonga del Sur, and Sambonga Sibugay. Out of the 722 projects supported by the foundation from 2005 to 2020, there are about 82 projects that is directly linked to mangrove conservation. These projects include efforts on nursery management, restoration, protection, livelihood support, capacity building, awareness raising, and advocacies. These projects were implemented in partnership with CSOs, committees, and mandated agencies. So conservation must be based on science. We need to understand the biology and ecology of mangroves in planning and implementing conservation actions. This is a mangrove forest in Buluan, in Ipil, Sambonga, Sibugay, that was protected and restored with our partners. The landward section of the mangrove was once an abandoned fund that was reverted back to mangroves while the seaward section is a remaining natural mangroves that were protected. So to provide brief des description about mangroves, these are the forests by the sea, located in coastal and riverine areas with brackish to salt water. The trees have specialized roots for adaptation to intertidal condition, dry during low tide and submerged during high tide. This forest serves as buffer between the land and the sea, protecting coastal areas and communities from tidal surges and typhoons. Mangrove forests are known to have stored more carbon than terrestrial forests, thus play an important role in climate change mitigation. Unfortunately, climate change also poses threat to the mangroves due to, due to sea level and water temperature rises and changes in storm patterns. Based on the Listing of Dr. Georgian Pravera, there are about 35 species of mangrove in our country. And in terms of mangrove extent, the Philippines is about uh, half million hectares in 1918, reduced to about uh, half, 256,000 in year 2000, uh, due to conversion to other uses such as aquaculture, uh, salt beds, and settlements. The latest information on our mangrove forest cover in 2015 from the DNR is, is about 303,000 hectares. So mangrove forests have varying characteristics in species composition depending on the zonation. This mangrove zonation is determined by tidal changes, elevation, salinity, and substrate of the soil. So Nerasia alba, uh, Pagatpat, Abyssinia marina, Abyssinia alba are known frontliner species and this dominate the seaward section of the mangrove forest. So the commonly used species of rhizopora, rhizopora the bakawan, used for planting are located mostly behind these frontliners in more landward, landward section of the mangrove forest. So this mangrove zonation is very relevant in any mangrove restoration efforts, not just a sort of the usual direct planting of rhizopora propagules in inappropriate sites that yields very low success. So the following section will expand more on the science-based mangrove conservation and management as practice and experience in implementing our cons mangrove conservation projects. 
basic to any mangrove management is the information about the site that can be generated through the conduct of mapping and characterization. Readily available technology and information uh, using Google Earth must be optimized. And in the conduct of uh, mapping and characterization, we need to note the historical as well as the present condition of the mangroves and note the naturally growing mangrove species as indicator of the appropriate species. Other biophysical features such as uh, substrate, as the salinity, as well as socioeconomic parameters, uh, including tenure and management mechanisms must be noted. The extent or area of uh, needing restoration as well as protection must also be documented. This activity on mapping shall generate the baselines as well as, uh, as well as the basis for succeeding interventions. So restoration aims to bring back the uh, ecological, next slide please. So restoration aims to bring back the ecological functionality, productivity and biodiversity, not just on tree planting. Restoration of mangroves must be done in areas originally covered with mangroves, but were degraded or deforested as the result of anthropogenic as well as natural disturbances. Anthropogenic disturbances include mangrove cutting for firewood, charcoal, tan bark, and construction materials, while natural disturbances are those mostly due to typhoons. So these are the areas appropriate for restoration. One of the main causes of mangrove deforestation is the conversion into aquaculture ponds. The decline of mangrove forests also affected the productivity of these aquaculture ponds. Ideally, the ratio of mangroves to pond needed to sustain productivity and ecosystem health is four is to one. There are lots of abandoned, underutilized, undeveloped ponds that can be reverted back to mangroves. However, this reversion may require a physical interventions as well as legal processes, especially those with the neural instrument, such as in the case of the Peace Pond List Agreement. As mangroves have specific site requirements for growth and development, and recognizing the diversity of ecosystems and habitat, there are areas that must not be planted with mangroves. These are the seagrass beds, mud plots, and other parts of the lower intertidal zone. These areas are equally important habitat needed to ensure the ecological integrity of the coastal ecosystem. Mud plots are crucial to survival of coastal birds. So the upper picture shows seagrass beds planted with dry sopora, depicting poor growth, as this is not a suitable area for macro planting, while the lower picture shows planting in lower intertidal zone, depicting that despite the effort on the effort to protect the seedlings through uh, the bamboo sticks or tree guards, survival is still low due to prolonged submersion. So we should not be planting in those areas. So having identified the areas appropriate for mangrove restoration, another consideration is the appropriate species to be planted. This is what we call species site suitability. Each mangrove tree species have its own site requirement. The picture depicts a mangrove area in Makilas, Ipil, Sambonga, Sibugay, naturally dominated with Soneracia alba or Pagatpat, as shown by the remaining trees and the remnants of trunks and buttress. The initial mangrove planting done in the area used Rhizopora species as this were readily available and propagules can be planted directly as in most mangrove planting activities. However, the exposure to strong waves and the infestation of barnacles resulted to very low survival and failure of the effort. So this is a classic example of disregarding species site suitability or the lack of science in mangrove restoration. To further elaborate, on the species site suitability, we need to understand the biology and ecology of mangrove trees. As I mentioned earlier, there are frontliner species. One of the challenges on mangrove planting is the presence of barnacles, wherein 
there is greater densities of barnacles in seaward areas than in landward areas. So one of the frontliner species, Sonerasia alba, pagatpat, whose bark during seedling stage is covered with a layer of wax as protection against water loss and attack of creatures such as barnacles. This layer of wax periodically peels or periodically uh, shed off. Let's see the picture on the right depicting the shedding of the uh, wax covering, thus freely freeing itself from barnacle infest infestation. On the other hand, in the middle picture, the rhizopora seedling has no mechanism to protect itself from barnacle infestation. Thus, uh, if we plant uh, rhizopora in seaward areas, these are very prone to barnacle infestations. While the picture on the leftmost part shows how we mostly conduct mangrove planting, the planting of rhizopora without due consideration on naturally species, naturally growing species suitable and adapted to the area, such as the Abyssinia and Pakatpat. So the success of restoration is attributed to the propagation of appropriate species, especially those naturally occurring in the area. We just need to be aware of the penology and fruiting season of the mangrove trees for planning on restoration. As uh, depicted in this uh, picture in Lian Batangas, the project partners are propagating the natural occurring Abyssinia as source of planting material. But there were also instances we encountered in the field where mangrove seedlings are brought from far places, like the case in Cavite, wherein the seedlings were purchased from Labu Camarines Norte. We've also heard uh, experience of uh, mangrove propagules planted in Lanao del Norte that were purchased in Bohol. This is not uh, science-based work because the transport of the seedlings causes due stress aside from the varying environmental conditions of the seedling production area and the planting sites. So next slide. So we have about uh, 35 uh, mangrove species depending on the zonation. However, the common uh, planting of single species, uh, mostly uh, rhizopora, is a, dis, uh, is a clear disregard of our high mangrove diversity. We must ensure species diversity appropriate to the site while monoculture causes vulnerability to pests and diseases. So crucial to ensuring appropriate species is the effective seedling propagation, especially those species with small seeds such as pagatpat. The foundation was challenged on the common practice of direct planting of rhizopora that results very low survival and the abundance of fruits of naturally occurring species such as pagatpat. Thus combining that technical knowledge of a forester with the diligence of a PO leader, Mr. Roberto Ballon of uh, KGMC in Cabasalan, Sambonga, Sibugay, we were successful in propagating pagatpat through seeds. And the process, seeds can be broadcasted in an abandoned plant and later on transplanted in the designated planting sites. So in this photo, uh, with the use of uh, seed, we can uh, mass produce uh, seedlings at a reasonable uh, cost. And this uh, propagation technique is now promoted in various parts of the country. Also recognizing that there are areas appropriately uh, be planted with rhizopora, we promoted nursery management to propagate quality ready to plant seedlings. However, the cost of potting bugs, aside from its contribution to non-biodegradable waste and environmental problem, encourages us to innovate. So the, uh, the picture shows the use of coconut husk that are abundant uh, in the communities for potting purposes, similar to, a uh, similar to the concept of marcoting. So these potted rhizopora propagules were then nurtured in the nursery prior to planting in the designated site. So aside from restoration, uh, protection of the mangrove forest is very, uh, very critical, very crucial. So remaining natural mangroves are bastion of mangrove biodiversity and source of planting materials. 
So we must protect these remaining mangroves with the committee members, Bantay Dagat, who regularly monitor and patrol the area. This protection effort also helps in hastening the recovery of degraded mangroves. So in addition to the science-based uh, efforts, there are also other lessons learned in implementing mangrove conservation. First, uh, there's a need for baseline, uh, important to be established for determining the impact of the, the activities, discovers the mangrove biophysical, socioeconomic condition of the mangrove, as well as the committees dependent on the said mangroves. The need, to, the need for a clarity of tenure or management regime that will assure the ownership and sustainability. This is to ensure that the mangroves will not remain as open access resources, but must be equitably accessible to responsible stakeholders. Mangrove degradation is mostly due to anthropogenic activities, thus addressing the socioeconomic needs of the communities dependent on the mangrove is crucial element to successful restoration and protection. This requires capacity building, organizational development, enhancement of livelihood consistent with uh, conservation such as fish culture, non-fed aquaculture, ecotourism, and the nurturing of partnership and collaboration with mandated agencies, private sector, and other groups. As per experience, the effective restoration requires at least uh, three years of support. By then, the mangrove seedlings are growing well and may already see some passive changes on the mangrove resources. This encourages communities to sustain the conservation efforts. And the degradation of mangroves cannot be fully addressed if there are an alternative source of materials or, or alternative to mangroves. As in the case of our Sibugay project, the successful rehabilitation of the mangroves led to increase of fish cuts. And this increase in fish cuts also uh, resulted to the in, uh, increasing need for uh, drying facility, the bilaran, mostly constructed from, from uh, mangrove poles. So this uh, uh, is again seen as a threat to the mangroves, especially with the scarcity and high price of bamboo. So this is an example of a cycle of degradation, restoration, and again, potential degradation. So we need to consider alternative materials such as bamboo and the establishment of uh, woodlots. And the uh, constraint on the development of the alternative source of materials, we can also designate management zone where controlled utilization, the, where in uh, pruning and thinning as silvicultural treatments can be promoted to address the local needs for uh, wood. This considers the uh, utilization of mangrove with the strict uh, regulation and control and the guarantee of continued replenishment of utilized uh, trees. And uh, second to the last, we need to optimize available technologies such as Google Earth for mapping and monitoring. We can uh, use drones for documentation and uh, lastly, the institu institutionalization of, with the mandated agencies as a key to sustainability. So he being the mangrove conservation uh, efforts institu institutionalized with mandated agencies provides some degree of continued financing and support. So there are other uh, lessons and uh, experiences, but I may consume the whole uh, time for sharing. So. Uh, at this time, may we hear from our uh, partners on the ground, their uh, respective experiences and lessons in implementing mangrove conservation uh, efforts. The first to share is Mr. Reynante Biramilo. Ray is a graduate of professional masters in tropical marine ecosystem management at the Marine Science Institute, University of the Philippines, Diriman. He's a licensed environmental planner and a national geographic uh, explorer. Uh, has uh, actively working with uh, Fisher Pokes, Coastal Committees in Buswanga, Northern Palawan, as the program coordinator for Community-Centered Conservation Philippines. So Ray, please uh, proceed with your uh, presentation. Uh, good afternoon. Um, so C3 Philippines or Community-Centered Conservation is a non-government organization based in um, Buswanga, Palawan, 
And uh, last year, we expanded our program in the Northern Palawan. So right now, we have also office in Taytay, Palawan. So our flagship species, maybe familiar kayo sa C3 na narinig nyo, Dugong. So ang flagship species namin ay ang uh, Dugong Conservation. But uh, we also work in other ecosystem and kasama na dun ang mangrove. So for this afternoon, I will be sharing uh, our experience and our program on mangrove uh, conservation in Buswanga Island, Palawan. So this is the outline of my presentation. I will be um, sharing uh, more on the community efforts or initiative in, in terms of partnership in, con in mangrove conservation and um, incentive mechanisms for mangrove cons conservation through uh, sustainable livelihoods. So uh, as all we know, uh, Palawan is um, composed of more than 51,000 hectares of mangrove reserve uh, through presidential proclamation 2152. And uh, Palawan, is, uh, Palawan mangroves uh, is considered as the you know, um, country's reserve comprising the 70% of our mangrove forest in the Philippines. So uh, C3 is working in Calamianes group of islands. Uh, for this uh, project, we only, uh, Calamianes group of islands composed of four municipalities. So medyo hiwalay siya doon sa mainland Palawan. And um, ang apat na munisipyo ay ang Linapakan, Culion, Buswanga, and Curon. And we are working in Buswanga Island. And it's uh, divided into two municipalities, the Buswanga and Curon. And um, in terms of diversity, uh, masasabi natin na Buswanga Island is a very uh, diverse island. And we have the pristine mangrove areas na pwede talaga naming ipagmalaki. So this is the mangrove maps of Calamianes Islands. And in 2017, um, we started the, our mangrove conservation program in partnership with Forest Foundation because of this um, mga threats na nakita doon sa isla. So one is the coastal development driven by the growing population and tourism. So alam naman natin na ang Palawan, ang Coron ay, ay uh, primary uh, tourist destination and talagang kailangan uh, mapagsabay or ma ma maging mahusay yung pagpaplano natin doon sa ating mga development activities doon sa mga isla na maliliit na ganito. So karamihan din doon sa threat na nakita ay yung man-made changes ng tidal or river flow na nagbabago ng sediment inputs kasi marami na ding syempre may mga road construction and um, other um, man-made activities na nagbabago yung sediments minsan nga nagtatanong yung mga communities na nagbabago din yung species na nakikita nila doon noong panahon na dati wala doon mga species na ganun because of siguro yung ano yun nga yung sinabi ni Eric kanina mahalaga yung uh, sediment inputs at saka yung uh, flow ng, ng tubig doon sa mga sites ng mangrove um, na tinutubuan ng mangroves. And of course, pagdating sa upland, forest, and agricultural areas, may mga unsustainable uh, human-related activities pa rin na nakaka-apekto sa, sa coastal ecosystem. So in 2017, we started working in six commu uh, coastal communities in Buswanga and two coastal communities in Coron. So I'll be sharing our experience in these um, eight communities. So dahil nga ang Buswanga ay isang maliit na isla, and uh, alam natin na ito yung mga, ang, ang mangrove areas ay vital in, in Buswanga Island communities for ecological and, and economical uh, benefits. So um, mangrove ecosystem stabilizes and protect the coast. So alam naman natin na yung pagiging intact at saka yung formation ng mangrove forest, uh, pati yung kanyang mga ugat ay talagang uh, makikita natin na kung paano siya humawak ng dupa o ng coastal, coastal areas natin. So malaki na itutulong sa pag-stabilize ng coast. And um, it also protects the marine ecosystem. So ang mangrove yung unang... Uh, sumasala pagdating sa mga pollutants um, so bago makarating ang mga mga pollute mga waste or pollutants sa ating seagrass area sa corals mangroves muna talaga ang ang sasalo so siya yung ano frontliners baga 
pagdating sa ating coastal ecosystem. And of course, source ito ng income ng mga coastal communities natin sa mga isla na kung saan hindi lang yung maging isda, pati yung ating mga kababaihan, yung mga nanay, ay maraming nakukuhang invertebrate sa mga mangrove uh, forest. And of course, itong ecosystem na ito ay nagsusupport din sa fisheries and island biodiversity, hindi lang sa pag-exisilbing um, nursery ng, ng mga, mga sda, pero yung mga ibang biodiversity na makikita dito like yung reptiles, uh, uh, birds, bats, ay dito rin naninirahan. And napatunayan din sa mga research na ang mangrove ecosystem is a good uh, carbon sink and big at nakakastore siya ng, mga, ng malaking uh, uh, blue carbon. So, so dahil dito, um, ito yung mga ilang activities na ginagawa ng Buswanga communities in terms of uh, mangrove conservation. So yun nga, nabanggit kanina ni Eric. So we started on participatory mangrove assessment. So mahalaga makilala or malaman nila ano bang meron dito sa aming mangrove areas, dito sa aming komunidad. So maganda rin, nakita rin kasi yun nga, ang lagi namin sinasabi, hindi naman ganun kasira yung mangrove doon sa Buswanga. Kaya uh, pinipili lang talaga namin yung mga patches yung i-rehabilitate. So tinutuko yun and yung sinabi din ni Eric, yung species suitability ay mahalaga kung ano yung mga i-raise na, na mangrove species sa nursery. So we established 15 community nurseries dun sa aming mga partner barangays and we identified nine mangrove species na i-raise dun sa community nurseries. And um, in the span of two years, uh, we planted 52,000 mangrove seedlings dun sa identified uh, the new dead sites dun sa, sa, sa isla. And um, nabanggit din ni Eric na mahalaga yung forest protection and monitoring. So in Buswanga Island, so we organize community volunteers at tinawag namin silang uh, Buswanga Island Coastal Guard. So we, we, we conducted uh, capacity development ng, ng, ng mga coastal guards. So meron kaming 35 uh, coastal guards ngayon sa Buswanga Island and and some of them are already deputized by the DNR as coastal guards or yung DENRO and um, sila yung ano, regular na nagpapatrol so they're, they're doing uh, regular patrolling sa mga coastal areas at mangrove areas ng mga community nila so meron kaming limang coastal guards every, every barangay and yung mga kababaihan naman um, Na, so hindi hindi lang siya puro lalaki pag sinabing uh, coastal guards doon sa Buswanga hindi lang siya puro lalaki so may mga babae na sumasama din doon sa patrol works and marami din doon sa sa coastal guards ang tumutulong sa pag-record pag-monitor ng mga planted seedlings at rehabilitated sites rehabilitation sites para makita yung uh, growth ng mga seedlings na tinanim so Yung forest protection also create uh, equal opportunities for women, for youth, and for IPs, for men uh, dito sa, sa protection and monitoring activities, which is a good uh, also uh, indicator na talagang uh, community-driven yung ating uh, mga, mga gawain na ito. So mahalaga din na sinulong noong proyekto, noong project, ay yung pag-develop ng Buswanga Mangrove Ecosystem management plan and uh, we're working on to uh, working with the local government units to mainstream it at their uh, executive and legislative agenda so medyo matagal yung proseso with we have we have conducted series of community consultations and joint planning process with the LGUs and with the community so yung sinasabi ni ni, ni Eric kanina yung pag tukoy ng mga management uh, strategies sa mga different zones ng mangrove areas. And um, we already presented the, the, the plan to the Municipal Development Council and we're just waiting for the executive order of the mayor of Buswanga to uh, adopt this plan and integrate it into the local development uh, agenda of, of, of the municipality. So mahaglaga din, so we also work with the Department of Education uh, and local schools in Buswanga in uh, conceptualizing uh, learning module to, to integrate mangrove conservation in their uh, curriculum. So with the help of um, teachers in uh, secondary school teachers in Boswanga, so we developed the localized 
uh, teacher's manual for mangrove ecosystem. And maganda to kasi sila talaga yung author. We just uh, conducted series of trainings to them and then they come, they come up with the modules. And nakakatuwa din na hindi lang doon natapos sa pag-develop ng module. So um, it's already adapted by the local DepEd and nanganganak din siya ng mga activities. Yung mga teachers na naging kasama namin sa pagbuo nito ay nakaka-create na itong nasa baba. Kung mga ano niya, sinali nila ito sa Gawad si Club. Yung mga brochure na ipinopromote nila yung mangrove conservation in, in, in Buswanga. So maraming nanganganak na na activities in working with the with the uh, education sector. So mahalaga 'yon. So we also ano uh, work with the youth in awareness building. So uh, we tap youth organizations, sangguni ang kabataan in conducting youth camps, spot exhibit drawing contest at saka marami pang mga pan activities during uh, different uh, festivals or fiesta or a school uh, activities or school programs so ginagawa talaga namin yung um, awareness building or mga lectures and series of um, seminars sa sa kabataan and also yung mga youth ay nagpa-participate din and maraming uh, tree planting activities na ginawa ng ng mga school organization yung yes oh so tinatap namin yan para talaga uh, makatulong din doon at ma, ma may sa buhay nila yung kanilang mga tut natutunan doon sa mga seminars na binibigay ng ng C3 team. So mahalaga din, marami ding yung program, marami ding mga um, information and knowledge product na nabuo like poster, billboards, pero mahalaga na appropriate yung gusto nating marating na audience sa pagbuo ng ating mga uh, information materials like kung ito pang turista, pang school, pang pang LGU, pang community. So, uh, meron kami mga translated na na uh, information materials into ko yun and para mas maintindihan ng communities at saka visual uh, para mas madaling ma, ma, maintindihan. So, mahalagang aspeto din yun na ng education. And uh, pagdating sa ito yung ano yung sinasabi kanina ni Eric sa lessons na kailangan talaga meron ding uh, incentives at pugunan din natin yung economic uh, na pangangailangan ng community. So we are now ano, starting the uh, developing uh, ecotourism or nature-based tourism in Buswanga. Pero matagal yung pinagdaanan din. Hanggang ngayon, uh, hindi pa nagsisiwala na dahil pa ng pandemic. So hindi kami maka-pilot ng, 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 ng activities. But uh, just to share, ma mahalaga na na, nag-work tayo with uh, other relevant agents like LGU, DNR, PCSD, and the ECAN board in Palawan. So we have PCSD and ECAN. So may mga permits na kailangan secure. And um, maganda rin yung ginawa na joint uh, inspection and validation. So mamaya makikita nyo yung design ng aming boardwalk na iba siya doon sa ibang boardwalk. Nasa labas siya sa periphery kasi matagal yung diskusyon kung saan ba talaga siya dapat ilagay. Kasi nga critical uh, habitat yung mangrove pagdating sa Palawan ay yan ay nasa core zone. And uh, kailangan din lahat ng activities na gagawin natin or yung ecotourism activities may feasibility study and we also ano, conducted carrying capacity study para talagang nakabase sa science yung ating gagawing uh, ecotourism activities. So inihanda talaga yon And uh, part also nung capacity yun ng paghahanda, yung capacity building of communities. So we partner with Department of Tourism through local tourism offices ng Buswanga. So yung aming mga community partners undergo, um, nagkameron sila ng mga trainings on tour guiding, first aid, uh, water safety rescue, yung WASAR. So lahat sila dumaan dyan at meron silang Uh, mga certification na nakuha sa sa ating mga uh, training providers and we also conducted the benchmarking or yung learning visit na dinala namin yung aming mga community partners in um, in other community based uh, ecotourism sites in Palawan in Puerto Princesa and El Nido para makita nila ano pa paano ba nagraran ang isang community based ecotourism so yun yung ginamit sa pagpaplano ng lahat ng uh, gusto nilang gawin sa kanilang mangrove areas and so this the this is the ano uh, mangrove boardwalk so it's it's 250 mangrove boardwalk now ang um, supported 
ng First Foundation is 50 but we leverage that to other uh, partners and yeah ngayon ay meron tayong 250 mangrove boardwalk and we have um, mangrove MPA information center in Buswanga and we have uh, also ano um, floating watchtower and plastic paddle boat so inihanda din talaga natin yung infrastructures na kakailanganin pagdating sa sa ecotourism activities so this is the the visitors center or mangrove uh, information center this is the floating guardhouse kasi floating kasi meron diyang uh, bats na nasa isang isla ng mangrove areas na pwedeng diyan manood ng sunset and bat watching so this is the paddle boat so mahalaga din yung pagdevelop ng menu of ecotourism activities like we I already identified mangrove kayaking or paddle boat bird watching in mangrove trails but watching and floating watchtower in nga yung mangrove boardwalk uh, snorkeling and um and diving in 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 that area so dahil ano uh, kay mahalaga na hindi lang e puro ecotourism so at mahalaga din na we work with uh, private sectors so ngayon uh, nakakuha na rin ang tatlong communities ng support for uh, mangro mangrove crab patting na gagawin din sa mga mangrove areas and um nakakuha na rin ng support from private sector in some community na mag to do or to to rehabilitate one hectare um, mangrove areas in their communities and uh, naging ano na rin parang uh, nagsusupply na rin yung ating communities ng mga mangrove seedlings so mga institution na iba maraming mga tree planting maraming mga mangrove uh, tree tree planting activities na ginagawa like DSWD PNP and yung mga community nurseries na tinayo ng ating mga uh, communities doon sila bumibili so nagiging source of income din siya so ito yung mahalaga na hindi lang laging ecotourism ang tinitingnan doon sa ating mga mangrove areas marami pang potential um, uh, enterprises na pwedeng mabuo na um, uh, ecologically uh, friendly enterprises and for the group practices so based on our experience uh, napakahalaga talaga yung participatory and community led um, mangrove conservation para makapag contribute sa success ng isang project and it will create ownership uh, of the project for the communities and mahalaga din yung strong support and level of understanding especially ng local governments and other partners who para sa sustainability efforts na ginagawa na kahit uh, matigil yung yung funding or matigil yung ating support kaya siyang ituloy ng ating partners on the ground lalo na ang local government units and mahalaga yung incentive mechanism to promote economic resiliency ng mga communities lalo na itong mga nagdaang um, itong pandemic so buti na lang may mga ibang uh, pinagkakakitaan din nga yung mga communities natin like yun nga uh, sa crab so dahil sila ay nangunguha ng mga wild crabs doon sa mangroves so nakakatulong din siya and um, of course yung inclusive project implementation kay itong mga mga ipinanganak nung partnership with Forest Foundation ay nagagamit natin as leverage to um, to scale up or by expand yung support natin sa mga communities like yung nabanggit ko kanina doon sa mangrove uh, boardwalk na talagang sinuportahan din ng ibang partners itong uh, other livelihoods ay nakakuha rin tayo ng, ng support from the outside of the, the project. So I think yun lang. So pwede nyo pong, kung gusto nyo pong malaman ang ibang information about Citri, so pwede nyo kaming uh, bisitahin yung aming website uh, www.citripil.org or visit our Facebook page Citri Update. So maraming salamat po. Thank you, Ray, for the sharing. I fully agree on the need to partner with our uh, committees to conduct of appropriate uh, IEC and of course, addressing the sustainable, sustainable uh, livelihoods. So for the next uh, presentation, this will be done by Ms. Emmaline Odonsomono. Uh, she is a licensed agriculturist, a graduate from Eastern Samar State University in uh, Salcedo. She is the municipal, uh, she serves as the municipal 
municipal technologies of the municipality of General MacArthur and became the municipal uh, agriculturist up to the present. She helped uh, uh, begin ARB Association in planning and supporting and garden support to rehabilitate the mangrove areas uh, impacted by Typhoon or Yolanda, being the technical support and uh, advisor, while also fulfilling her duties as the municipal agriculturist of the town. So, Emmaline, uh, please uh, go ahead with your uh, presentation. Good afternoon, sir. So, this afternoon I will be sharing here in the understory series of Forest Foundation Philippines the mangrove rehabilitation experience of Vegan Agrarian Reform Beneficiaries Association uh, after Typhoon, Super Typhoon Yolanda. So, I will be sharing to you the, the damages brought by Super Typhoon Yolanda to the mangroves in General MacArthur Easter Summer, uh, the importance of mangrove rehabilitation initiatives, and what are the rules of communities in mangrove rehabilitation and the lessons learned in implementing mangrove rehabilitation project. So, uh, first, uh, ipakilala ko muna ang General MacArthur. Saan ang General MacArthur? So, we are one of the 21 coastal town in Eastern Samar. At kami po ay nakaharap sa Pacific. And we, ha we are a fifth-class municipality. At kami po ay maswerte na natulungan ng Forest Foundation Philippines. So, uh, kami po ay mayroong 30 barangays. At out of this, we have 13 coastal areas and meron po kaming 15,097 na population with 3,858 families. So next po. Next slide, please. So as we all know, nakita naman natin sa social media kung ano yung mga effect ng Typhoon Yolanda. So ang General MacArthur po is one of the most Devastated municipalities in Eastern Samar when Super Typhoon Yolanda hit Eastern Visayas region last November 8, 2013. Though no life was lost, much of people's properties were destroyed and sources of living were irrecoverable. Next. So, uh, in this presentation, we will be focusing on the damage to mangroves. So yung General MacArthur po, we believe na we were saved by the mangroves from the storm surge brought by the typhoon. So the mangrove serves as front shield protecting the whole municipality against the perilous storm surge. So kung mapapansin natin, nakita natin dun sa, sa mga video uh, during the typhoon Yolanda at ito ay nag ng maraming casualties sa ibang mga municipalities or like Tacloban and other uh, municipalities. So we were so blessed na kahit napakalakas nung Super Typhoon Yolanda ay walang, wala kaming casualty. Ang um, ano lang is na damage talaga yung mangrove areas namin. So the impact of Typhoon Yolanda causes 81% uh, total defoliation on the mangrove in Kapupukanan Island, which is the project site of Vegan ERB Association. So most of the mangroves are Bakawan family, which is the dominant mangrove species in the island, where 30% are intact or alive and only 6% are recovering during the assessment. So as you can see in the map, the mangroves occupied most of the Kapupukanan Island, uh, Anahaw Island, and the shorelines of Barangay Aguinaldo, Barangay Santa Cruz, Vigan, Inalay Poblacion 7, 6, and 2. So the project site was in the Kapukanan Island at wala pong inhabitan doon, wala pong tao doon, pero doon talaga siya yung first nang nag-receive ng malalakas na storm surges nung Typhoon Yolanda. So uh, what are the mangrove rehabilitation initiatives? So una, nagkaroon po ng mangrove damage assessment which was the first partnership between Forest Foundation Philippines, the former PTFCF, and the BARBA started on October 2014 with a mangrove assessment project. So, next. 
So the second project was the mangrove rehabilitation where uh, the barba takes the lead in restoring the mangroves of the island with the financial and technical assistance from, from the PTFCF or the Forest Foundation Philippines. Uh, 10 hectares of mangrove area were planted with Sunirasha alba or the pagatpat, Rhizophora species, and Avicennia, as these species were known to be resilient and has a good contribution in maintaining the ecological balance of the environment. So before Typhoon Yolanda, diverse ang, ang ecosystem, ang mangrove ecosystem ng Kapupukanan Island. So uh, the the Barba, in partnership with the Forest Fund the Foundation, conducted training on seedling production of Sonirasha Alba or Pagatpat uh, with the technical expertise from Sir Roberto Balon from Sambuanga. And as of 2020, the Barba established two mangrove nurseries, which produced more or less 105,000 mangrove seedlings. So after phase one, after the 10 hectares, project the the it comes the mangrove rehabilitation phase two which covers the remaining 17 17.87 hectares of the island which takes almost three years of implementation from the end of 2017 to mid-year of 2020. The project focused more on the inner part of the island planting rhizophora or bakhau since it was the predominantly species on the area before the Typhoon. So kung mapapansin nyo, napakarami pong seedlings ang naproduce ng barba at hindi siya masyadong malaki yung area. Kasi dun sa area, napaka-challenging at marami ang nagiging mortality since we are very, ma lagi kaming binibisita ng typhoon. So ano ba yung importance ng mangrove in enabling disaster resilient ecosystem and communities? So mangrove offers an essential source of protection against the effects of natural hazards and erosions because they serve as a buffer against strong winds, storm surges, and tsunami. So beyond protection, mangrove provide a home to dozens of different types of fish, birds, and small animals, in addition to being a source of food and livelihood for fishermen and local communities. So the mangrove of Kapukanan Island shields the seaweed production area of the Vegan ERB Association members where the source of raw materials for this, their seaweed noodles came from. And it also offers a shelter for a tired fishermen and seaweed farmers during the day. And the mud crab and crustaceans are also found in the island. So what are the role of communities in mangrove rehabilitation? So uh, during the project implementation, the community participation were greatly encouraged during the trainings uh, in coastal cleanup and outplanting activities. So na involved po, marami po ang involved dun sa mangrove rehabilitation project ng Barba since yun nga, ang awareness ng mga tao is napakataas dahil ito nga ang nag-save after nung Typhoon Yolanda. So, na-involve po ang mga youth, ang women, public school teachers, and LGU officials. So, including including our beloved municipal mayor, uh, Honorable Flora T, where she visited the island during the mangrove planting activity together with the board member T. So, sumama siya talaga doon sa area para makita uh, yung situation ng area. And after that, Nagkaroon po ng co-management agreement between the BARBA and the local government unit to take the lead. Yung BARBA na po yung magtitake ng, ng responsibility, sila yung naka-assign naka doon sa pag, pamamahala ng mangrove restoration ng island. At the LGU, Banday Dagat, also regular uh, contact patrolling within the area para maiwasan po yung mga nagkakandak ng mga illegal mangrove gatherers. So ano po ba yung mga lessons ng uh, natutunan during the implementation of mangrove rehabilitation project? So unang-una is the community needs to be involved in every step 
of the mangrove rehabilitation project. Uh, the participation of the youth in the project has a great impact on the awareness of how the mangrove is important to the community. So napakahalaga po na involve po ang mga youth at talagang nagbo-volunteer po sila doon sa, sa planting activity kahit ang island po. It takes mga 15 minutes yung travel through boat at sumasama sila kahit medyo risky yung pagpunta sa dagat. Yung iba kahit hindi marunong lumangoy ay sumasama sila. And since Eastern Samar is a typhoon prone province, lagi kaming binibisita ng, as I said kanina, lagi kaming binibisita ng bagyo almost halos taon-taon. Uh, mayroon, mayroon kaming nararanasan na bagyo. And since we are facing the Pacific, malalakas po yung alon dun sa island. Uh, isang challenge is the mangrove de debris. So, Ito po ay naging cause din ng pagkasira ng mga itinanim na, na mga mangrove. Kasi nung una, uh, yung, yung suggestion na hindi galawin ang mga damage na mangrove area, were, kaya hindi ginalaw yung mga remaining mangrove debris. So after, after a year siguro ng implementation, nagkaroon ulit ng typhoon at doon talaga yung itinanim na mga ng mga seedlings ng mangrove ay nasira ulit dahil sa mga debris, malalaking kahoy na nandoon sa area kasi naano sila ng strong wave. And yung nursery should be established in a strategically located area that is near from the seawater and sheltered from strong waves. So may mga meron kami na establish yung barba, may na establish na nursery doon sa sa inner part ng ng barangay ng vegan hindi siya doon sa island kasi napakahirap i, i grow yung seaweeds doon sa uh, yung i mean yung mangroves doon sa island and mangrove planting has a different techniques especially the selection of appropriate species grown in the different area so yun nga yung first yung phase 1 na project nag-focus doon sa so ni Russia, kasi doon sa isang part ng island, nandun yung mga Sonirasya at Avicenia. So as Sir Eric said kanina, na dapat kung ano yung existing na mga mangrove, dapat yun ang itatanim. So the mangrove species with weak root and trunk system like Rhizophora can be easily uprooted. Hence, it should not be planted on the seafront. Instead, strong mangrove species like Sonirash Alba and Abyssinia Marina are the best candidates. So yun nga, doon sa inner part ng island, uh, doon na nila itinanim yung most ng Rhizophora species. And we also tried uh, marami pong itrinay ng mga technology kung paano mas mataas yung survival ng seedling and hindi naging feasible yung bamboo. Kaya kasi nga, masyadong malakas yung stro yung yung mga alon doon sa area pag nabubunggo po siya ng mga ng mga kahoy yung mga debris ay talagang nasisira din yung mga tanim. And uh, lastly, mangrove rehabilitation can be done in just 1 to 3 years to make it successfully recovered as experienced by the Vegan ERB Association. Hindi po napaka hindi hindi siya madali. And it needs assisted regeneration, total plan, and takes a lot of efforts, money, and teamwork. At kami po ay sa LGU ay talagang nakatuto kami dun sa recovery talaga ng island. Kaya uh, nasa, na-include na po sa aming CRM plan ang mga possible na mga project para ma-sustain po yung conservation and protection ng mga group at mas madali siyang makarecover uh, yung island. So, yun lang po ang aking presentation at marami pong salamat. Definitely, the experience of the uh, vegan ARB on rehabilitating uh, mangroves damaged by super typhoon like the case of uh, Yolanda surely provide us better information to design more appropriate uh, rehabilitation projects. So, thank you for that.
So we have uh, heard the uh, experiences and lessons from uh, two of our uh, partners, one from uh, Busuanga in Palawan and another in uh, uh, Bigan, General uh, MacArthur in uh, Eastern Samar. Again, our appreciation to Ray and Amaline, Emaline for their uh, presentation. So at this time, uh, maybe open the session for some uh, questions and answers, clarifications on the presentation. One of the query a while ago on optimizing the use of available technologies, our experience that we use the Google Earth and uh, use the historical uh, tool to check the historical uh, situation, of course, to determine impact or or changes on the mangrove cover, mangrove uh, extent. And uh, this is very helpful in uh, determining uh, effectiveness of forest uh, mangrove conservation efforts, especially if the time frame is, uh, say, uh, three to four years before, during, and after. You can uh, use the features of the Google Earth to check for those uh, informations. And uh, in terms of measuring effectiveness, as part of our uh, grant uh, management, we do monitoring, uh, participatory monitoring with our partners. We check uh, survival rates. And uh, of course, we uh, interview uh, committee uh, members on the impact of uh, mangrove planting in terms of uh, improvement on the actual vegetation and improvement on the resources that is uh, being collected from the mangrove uh, resources. Because as in our uh, Sibugay Bay uh, Kapasan experience, we saw that uh, after uh, rehabilitating the mangroves, uh, three years after, we already noticed the improvement of uh, fishery resources. There's an improvement on the population of shrimp, population of uh, shell, crabs, and uh, even uh, the availability of lapu-lapu uh, 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 fingerlings. Lapu-lapu is one of the aquaculture uh, effort in Kabasalan. So those are some indicators on the effectiveness of uh, mangrove conservation effort done in the area. The recovery of uh, these uh, marine, coastal uh, marine uh, resources that provides them the real and sustainable uh, livelihood. Maybe uh, uh, Ray, uh, can you please elaborate more on the process for application of permit? Because uh, as per inquiry from uh, Mr. Yap, uh, how was your experience in applying for uh, permits? Ray? Yes, uh, actually, ano, medyo iba kasi yung permit na kailangan sa, sa Palawan. So meron kaming tinatawag na Ekan Board certification and sa DNR. So ang, ang nung simula syempre challenging kasi maraming documents na hinihingi. Pero ang maganda doon dahil sabay-sabay uh, na joint ang ginawang validation and inspection with the relevant agencies like DNR, PCSD and LGUs, the Sangguniang Bayan members also ano, participated in the, in the validation and inspection and even planning the the construction especially on the construction of the mangrove boardwalk medyo naging mas madali siya um tumagal lang siya siguro mga dalawang buwan pero dahil marami ding documents so siguro ang challenge is to to secure all the documents needed to to secure the permit pero with the yun nga basta mas naiintindihan na ng partners agencies yung gagawin and objective of the project mas madali na siyang facilitate. Thank you. Uh, in addition, uh, since uh, CIT is working with LGUs, pwedeng uh, siguro mag-share on the specific policies or denances implemented by your pa partner LGUs. Later on, dagdagan ni Emaline, dahil nasa connected siya sa LGU. Uh, policies on protecting and conserving our mangroves as your, uh, per your uh, experiences. Oh, actually, ang tinungtungan talaga namin doon ay yung local government code na uh, yung LGU ay may, ano, may karapatan na siguraduhin yung ecosystem niya ay yung ecology ng kanyang ecosystem or yung nasasakupan ay balance at 
mamamanage niya. Ang ang ipinush din namin dito like the forest land use planning na proseso. So, 'di ba, pag forest land use plan, nandoon din yung mangrove pero ganun pa rin, parang napaka general ng description ng gagawin sa mangrove but through this uh, mangrove uh, ecosystem development plan mas nahihimay natin yung zoning yung strategies na appropriate for mangrove ecosystem so yun yung mga uh, batayan yung mga planning uh, and development agenda and planning policies ng LGUM ang binasihan para makabuo nitong mga mangrove uh, development plan mas maka mas maka mas maraming may dadagdag pa din si Ma'am Emmaline kasi Ma'am Ah uh, kami sa LGU actually uh, honestly wala po kaming wala pa kaming mga plans pero nakabase kami doon sa protection nakabase kami doon sa municipal fisheries ordinance namin at sa sa national na law na kung saan nagpo-protect din ng mangroves kasi may mga case na may nanguha talaga ng mangroves para sa fuel, para sa sa bahay. So, yun ang ginagamit naming basihan sa protection. Doon sa 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 mga mangrove areas namin. Wala kaming kasi isa kami sa fifth class municipality, wala kaming updated pa ng mga plans like forest land use plan, wala po kami. So wala po po ako masyadong ma-share sa inyo. Uh, Ray, uh, Malin, how about yung incentive sa mga fisher folk uh, partners natin? Uh, pwede bang incentive daw yung uh, pag-engage uh, sa uh, planting of seedlings? Mm, kami po. Opo, ganun din siguro yes, sa ibang meron. project namin, uh, incentive na binibigay. So Ray, Ray at Yes, oh, may incentive na ibinibigay. Uh, from like um depende na rin sa organization ng community like uh, it can be uh, ibinibigay sa isang organization or individual sila na ang namamahala or individual mo ibibigay yung incentive through uh simula sa paggather or pag collect ng mga seedlings seeds wildlings and pag establish ng nursery so may incentive naman na ibinibigay on the rehabilitation Ah, uh, yung yung sa barba naman is uh, during the seeding production at dun sa mangrove planting talaga, wala pong yung incentive lang na ibinibigay is yung food allowance lang ng per volunteer. Pero yung ibang ano naman, kung wala wala silang meal allowance, binibigyan yung mga especially yung youth, binibigyan sila ng mga token, mga mga t-shirt or yung mga ano na na para pag-promote ng awareness. So may t-shirt at may binibigay ng mga 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 hats. So yun. Tapos yung ano naman dun sa mga members ng barba naman na ina-involve talaga dun sa sa planting, sa rehabilitation, sila yung mga seaweed farmers. So parang ano sa kanila, tinutulungan namin sila Uh, may assistance sila in terms of inputs na bibigyan sila para sa livelihood. At may mga, yung BFAR, yung partner namin, ay nagbibigay sa kanila ng tulong para sa sa processing ng seaweed noodles nila. Kasi yung barba, may product silang uh, ginawa, uh, yung, which is yung seaweed noodles. So yun ang parang incentive sa kanila uh, in relation dun sa dun sa mga sa pag-implement nila ng uh, pag-participate nila dun sa mga group rehabilitation project at kung ano yung mga binibigay na natulong dun sa barba so kung sino yung tumutulong dun sa rehabilitation sila yung parang na priority na mat- mabibigyan ng livelihood at that way na encourage talaga sila na na mag-join dun sa project apology po but at uh, thank you for uh, the questions and uh, hopefully I will uh, responded to your uh, concerns. Siguro dun sa iba po na hindi namin uh, nasagot, you can send us later yung mga comments ninyo then we can uh, respond accordingly. So at this time, uh, based dun sa uh, three presentations, these are some of the key messages. Of course, uh, we are uh, 
the importance of mangroves to uh, stabilize, protect yung coastal communities natin, uh, protect yung marine ecosystems, uh, source of livelihood uh, para sa mga coastal uh, communities. Then uh, yung role niya sa fisheries and uh, island uh, biodiversity aside from the potential for storing yung blue carbon. Uh, nabanggit ko kanina, mas mataas yung stored carbon ng uh, mangroves and the uh, associated uh, habitat kumpara dun sa up- upland o sa terrestrial. So conservation really must be based on science. Uh, hindi tayo pwede magkamali ng conservation kung uh, ating ginagawa ay based on science. Then yung uh, information about yung sa site, napaka-importante yan. The site dictates yung appropriate actions, appropriate interventions. Hindi basta naisipan lang natin magtanim, Uh, tusok-tusok na ng uh, bakawan. So napaka-importante yung information about the site. Of course, yung restoration, yung dapat yung aim natin, yung improvement na ecological status. Hindi ito natatapos sa pagtatanim at hindi sapat yung pagtatanim lang. Kailangan yung itanim natin yung appropriate species so that we can contribute to the diversity, to the ecological uh, stability and the health of the mangrove forest. Baka po sa pagtatanim ng, na, natin ng maling species, uh, nasasayang yung effort natin, nasasayang yung pera, yung pondo. At the same time, we may not uh, know yung ecological impact ng planting rhizophora in uh, non-appropriate uh, in uh, inappropriate uh, sites. So napakahalaga po na ang i-restore natin yung mga dating mangrove. Unfortunately, maraming nagtatanim sa mga seaward areas na da- dagat na, seagrass areas na. So hindi dapat po yun yung ating uh, ni-restore. Uh, we need to revert yung mga uh, unutilized and developed uh, ponds para kasi ito naman po talaga yung dating mangroves natin. Although mas challenging lang dahil kailangan yung uh, physical uh, intervention, lalo na po yung legal process. At isa sa mga bottleneck on reverting abandoned fish pond is on the legal process. So clearly, walang magtatanim o hindi tayo nagtatanim sa mga seagrass beds, sa mud flat areas, pati doon sa mga lugar na lagi ng mataas yung tubig, yung lower intidal zone. So uh, science, site species suitability yan po yung uh, kailangan nating uh, foremost consideration and uh, uh, propagate uh, plant appropriate uh, species natural according the doon sa area nature knows best kung ano po yung surviving in the area yun yung species na talagang adapted suitable doon sa lugar at huwag na tayong mag-introduce ng mga na species na hindi naman talaga thriving doon sa lugar. And uh, of course, our innovations on seedling uh, propagation. Nabanggit po kanina sa isang tanong yung kung availability ng pagatpat roots. Uh, Siyempre, kasama po yan sa ating biodiversity, yung bats. Kailangan din nilang kumain. Pero uh, kung gusto po nating isecure yung seedlings na yun, pwede nating balutan. Lagyan po ng uh, protection. Uh, to situate na may mga the, uh, selected uh, seeds, selected fruits tayo na pwedeng magamit for uh, propagation. Yan yung innovation sa seedling propagation natin uh, to do away with uh, plastic bags. Kasi sa paggamit po ng plastic bag ay hindi tayo nakakatulong sa environment bagkos lalo tayong nagdadagdag dun sa problema ng basura. So we uh, make use of yung mga natural uh, raw materials, yung coconut husk na napakadami sa mga uh, communities natin. Then yung establishment ng nurseries, walang kapalit dyan na yung uh, ating mga tinatanim ay quality, ready to plant, hindi lang yung basta tusok, uh, yung tamang edad. Kung sa mga seaward areas tayo magtatanim, the bigger yung seedlings, the more mature, the better dahil mas ready na siya sa, sa harsh weather condition. Huwag lang naman po yung overgrown. Kasi later on, pag nag-overgrown naman yung seedling mo, medyo malaki na yung root system niya. Very prone na rin po sa stress and sa, sa, sa mortality. Then of course, yung incentive sa mga partner communities natin on the uh, restoration, uh, planting, through yung incentive mechanisms, livelihood opportunities, 
'yung nabanggit ko nga po kanina, the most sustainable livelihood ay 'yung galing mismo sa mangrove. 'Yung pagbalik po ng isda, pagbalik ng hipon, pagbalik ng shells, those are the real sustainable livelihood. 'Yung pong ecotourism ay dagdag lang po 'yan. At dahil nga po sa karanasan natin sa COVID, 'yung ecotourism na uh, isa sa mga pinagkakita ng coastal communities natin ay eh, kung mayroon mga pang ganitong pandemya ay uh, hindi rin po magagamit yan, hindi po rin effective yung ecotourism. So balik pa rin po yan sa natural resources. So we, we uh, need to secure yung capital assets natin, yung, capital, uh, uh, yung natural capital natin. Kasi yan talaga nang gagaling po yung tunay na uh, livelihood. Yung protection, napakahalaga po yon hindi lang po yung pagtatanim. But uh, yung priority dapat natin is to secure, protect yung mga remaining uh, mangroves natin, yung natural mangroves natin. Yung nakabanggit ko kanina, yung dating 500,000 hectares na natural mangroves natin, na-reduce na to 200. Then uh, data ngayon nasa 300, pero hindi natin alam. Yung mga naratatamnan naman na hindi na po yan mangrove dati. So we need to protect whatever uh, remaining sa ating mga uh, mangroves. Then uh, nabanggit ni Emmalyn kanina, yung experience nila, hindi sapat yung tatlong taon. Dapat mas mahaba pa kung meron pong available na, ba, na resources, uh, financial, of course, yung commitment ng communities natin to sustain yung effort na yon. Kasi kung uh, nagtanim lang, nagkuha, nagkuha po ng picture, post sa Facebook, eh, hindi po sustainable yon. Uh, hindi po siya uh, tree uh, growing activity, kundi talagang tree planting lang po yun. At useless lang po yung effort na hindi masustain yung ganong yung gawain. Of course, we need to work with communities. They are the frontliners. They are the, at the forefront of conservation. Sila po yung isa sa uh, kasama sa problema ng uh, degradation ng mangrove. Kaya dapat din silang kapartner sa restoration, protection ng ating mga uh, mangrove areas. It's, Ganun din po yung mga kabataan, the millennials, uh, which is the next generation. Kailangan na po natin silang ihanda through the uh, provision ng environmental education. Napakahalaga po dito yung appropriate IEC for each sector. Hindi siya one size fits all na IEC or environmental education. Then yung to strengthen yung sustainability. Yung ownership ng uh, efforts natin, ownership by the LGUs, committee members, other sectors, other stakeholders, napaka-importante uh, po yan na may establish. Then yung pong uh, potential ng mangrove area for ecotourism, pero kailangan natin i-consider yung carrying capacity and the feasibility na itong ecotourism as, long as, you, as well as yung prof profitability lalo yung itong karansan natin sa uh, pandemya. Then ano pa po yung mga livelihood opportunities? Ang uh, isa sa mga uh, promote po ngayon yung non-fed uh, aquaculture, uh, like yung pag-alaga po ng mga shell, pag-alaga ng uh, crabs, na uh, ito naman po ay talagang naturally thriving sa mga mangrove areas. Mayroon din pong mga thriving enterprise on seedling, for, uh, seedling sale, Meron kaming partners sa uh, Batangas na kung saan yung seedlings nila ay may mga uh, nag, uh, ito, nagbebenta sila at may mga sponsor sila ng seedlings. So kumikita rin po sila doon as a uh, part of their uh, livelihood. Then yung role ng mangrove in uh, 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 pag-address uh, sa mga ito, disasters, enabling disaster uh, resilient ecosystem and communities. Napakahalaga po yan dahil nga po ang mangroves ay ating mga coastal defense. Hindi po yan matatawaran ng pag-construct ng mga civil works. Kasi napaka-importante po yung presence ng ating mga natural mangroves as natural barrier. Maliban po sa uh, sila yung nakakatulong sa environment, nakakatulong sa, sa diversity, Decent, uh, nag-provide sila ng ating uh, kabuhayan, na uh, mga importanteng elements yan ng resiliency. So with those uh, key messages, uh, meron uh, mga publications, references 
available sa website namin, Web uh, Develop a Community-Based Mango Rehabilitation Training Manual. Ito po ay na uh, develop as part po ng postulant the effort ng foundation noon. Meron din po kayong material on the identification, pictorial guide ng uh, mangroves. Meron kanina yung sa propagation ng pagatpat, ready available po yon sa sa website namin. Then may mga proceedings on the discussions uh, like yung sa Second National uh, Mangrove Summit. So the purpose of uh, this webinar is to share knowledge, uh, lessons, and experiences and to disseminate our uh, grant making work. So yung mga learnings natin uh, na, na uh, tutunan ngayong hapon, we encourage you to partner with us to translate these learnings into conservation actions. Hindi kailangan matuto lang tayo. Kailangan nating i-apply itong mga ating uh, natutunan. So with that, you may develop your project proposals. Pwede po kayong mag-apply ng grant sa amin with this eligible uh, activities, yung mga conduct ng assessment to include yung biophysical, socioeconomic, as well as, well as yung governance, yung tenure, yung management uh, regime ng mga mangroves na uh, mangrove areas natin. Yung pag-expand sa mga mangrove restoration efforts, we support yung scaling up, yung reversion ng mga AUUs, rehabilitation nitong mga degraded mangroves, uh, pag-establish ng nurseries, which are very crucial sa restoration effort. Then yung uh, uh, pag-enhance mga patrolling, monitoring uh, effort natin. Yung support sa livelihood uh, na may links, uh, uh, direct links sa mga conservation. Then yung establishment ng legal, source, legal sources of alternative to mangroves. Kasi sa coastal communities, kailangan ng panggatong, kailangan ng pamposte sa bahay, kailangan ng pamposte sa baklad. So napaka-importante po na meron tayong alternatives o may at least legal source nitong mga raw material na ito. Then yung capacity building, ito naman po ay uh, kailangan ng communities, pati po yung mga forest management uh, bodies to enhance yung governance uh, mechanism sa mga mangrove uh, efforts natin. So pwede pong mag-apply online. Uh, through yung portal namin uh, na nakaka-plus dito sa si screen. May pwede rin po kayong magpadala ng inquiries to dun sa email. At pinaka, uh, pwede rin pong bisitahin yung website namin www.forestfoundation.ph para po malaman yung mga details on our grant making work. So lastly, uh, pinapalagan po namin yung feedback ninyo para ma mas mapaayos pa po namin yung aming mga uh, webinar series, itong understory. So we encourage you to please uh, accomplish the evaluation form para later uh, once ma-accomplish po yung evaluation form, magbibigay po kami ng certificate of uh, attendance. Meron din pong... Uh, available na rin po sa YouTube mga previous uh, sessions under story sessions sa correspondation ng YouTube. Pwede nyo rin po uh, bisitahin niya. So with that, uh, salamat po. Uh,